Greetings, my name is Siobhan Hancock with the New Mexico Department of Health Obesity, Nutrition and Physical Activity Program. Healthy Indigenous cooking is part of a statewide effort to reduce obesity, diabetes and other chronic diseases in Indian country using traditional Native American recipes. New Mexico is home to 23 distinct tribes, pueblos and nations, each with its own culturally different foodway. This webinar series focuses on healthy meal preparation of Southwest Native American recipes using indigenous ingredients available in New Mexico. You may substitute some items with local produce or spices from your area. The recipe and other cooking sessions are available online. See the resource slide at the end of this presentation for more information. Healthy Indigenous Cooking is sponsored by New Mexico Department of Health. This program is partly funded by Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program for Education, SNAP-Ed, and the CDC. Let me introduce you to our chefs. Lois Ellen Frank, PhD, is a Santa Fe, New Mexico-based chef, native foods historian, culinary anthropologist, educator, photographer, writer, and organic gardener. She won the James Beard Award for her cookbook, Foods of the Southwest Indian Nations. Lois is the chef and owner of Red Mesa Cuisine, LLC, a catering company specializing in indigenous Native American cuisine and cultural education with a modern twist. She cooks alongside Native American chef Walter Whitewater. Dr. Frank has spent over 30 years documenting and working with the foods and lifeways of Native American communities in the Southwest. In 2020, she received the Local Hero Oya Award, which recognizes an exceptional individual for the work they do to create healthy, innovative, vibrant, and resilient local sustainable food systems in New Mexico. Walter Whitewater is a Native American chef at Red Mesa Cuisine who works with Chef Frank in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Whitewater has appeared on numerous TV network food cooking shows and in many cooking videos. Walter traveled with Chef Frank as part of the U.S. State Department and Consulate General's Culinary Diplomacy Program to Ukraine in 2013, the United Kingdom in 2015, and to Russia in 2016, where the two chefs promoted indigenous foods of the Americas through the culinary arts. He was one of the first Native American chefs to cook at the James Beard House in New York City and won the James Lewis Award in 2008 from BCA Global for his work as a Native American chef. He also worked with Chef Frank on the James Beard Awarded Cookbook, Foods of the Southwest Indian Nations. For more information on Chef Frank and Chef Whitewater, please visit their website at redmesacuisine.com. Session 1. Hummus and no fry fry bread. Let's get started with Chef Lois Ellen Frank and Chef Walter Whitewater. Hi, my name is Lois Ellen Frank, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to make healthy hummus recipes. We're going to make three hummus recipes, and we're going to start uh, first with uh, the pinto bean. So I'm going to be using canned beans, which all of you should have in your kitchens. And uh, this is easy. Uh, we're gonna use a uh, small size pan, but we can scale the recipe up if you're going to be using a larger size can. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna open the canned beans and there's going to be some bean liquid. So what we wanna do is we wanna pour off that bean liquid, which we're going to use in the hummus. So I have this handy little uh, strainer. I'm just going to take a bowl here and I'm actually going to pour the bean juice off. Now we have to remember something with canned beans is that canned beans do have some salt. So what I usually do is uh, when I'm making a salad or maybe a, a super stew, I would uh, rinse the beans. We're going to use the beans but we're not going to add any additional salt. So we want to just be conscious that when using canned beans, those beans will have some salt in it. So we're gonna take the beans and we're gonna put it in a food processor or a Cuisinart. 
and we're going to take some garlic. Now, raw garlic is usually very strong, and sometimes it is too strong for some of our seniors. So I'm gonna show you how to blacken garlic, and blackening garlic softens the flavor a little bit, making it a little softer for us to use. So I have some garlic that's already blackened, but I wanna show you, I have a cast iron pan here, and I'm going to take some of the raw garlic, and I'm going to put it into a very hot cast iron pan. You can see here that it's very hot, and that garlic is just going to blacken, and we the pan is dry. It's been seasoned, but there is no oil in the bottom. I just want to make sure that that garlic starts to roast and blacken. Okay. Once the garlic has blackened, we're going to take it out of the pan. Okay, and let it cool in a bowl or on a plate. Very easy to do, and this is going to help with that uh, garlic flavor. So now I'm going to take the garlic, and I'm just going to chop, but remember we're putting it in a Cuisinart, so we don't have to chop that garlic uh, too much. So we're going to just do a very loose chop. Okay, and then we're going to take that blackened or roasted garlic, and as per the recipe, we're going to put that into the Cuisinart. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some fresh lemon, and I know all of you can get fresh lemon. Uh, what you may not know is that if you take your hand and you rub the lemon with your hand on the cutting board, it loosens the juice inside making it easier to squeeze. So I'm gonna cut my lemon, it's nice and soft now. And I'm going to squeeze the lemon into a measuring cup. And then I can use this for the, all the recipes that we're going to be using today. So very easy to do. And fresh lemon not only has lots and lots of nutrients, but it has uh, vitamin C, and it adds a better flavor. So the recipe wants us to put four tablespoons, so I'm gonna measure my lemon now into the Cuisinart. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some tahini. Now tahini is actually made from sesame seeds. Uh, this is from Trader Joe's, but you should be able to order it uh, anywhere. If for any reason you can't get it, don't be afraid to make this without the tahini. It'll still taste good, it just won't be as creamy. So tahini is, is actually like a seed or a nut butter, um, and you could substitute or you could leave this out. So we want to add two tablespoons of this. Uh, this also adds nutrients, and it's going to add a little bit of that uh, flavor as well as uh, some oil. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of kosher or sea salt. Uh, we're going to measure out uh, about uh, half a teaspoon to three quarters of a teaspoon and then a tiny bit of black pepper. About an eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to blend this but if I don't add any liquid, it's going to be very thick. So I still have my bean juice. I'm going to pour in a little bit of that bean juice and I'm going to make sure that everything gets nice and blended. And we have just made our first hummus. Uh, what you always wanna remember is you wanna take a clean spoon and you wanna taste. Because as the chef or the cook, it's up to you uh, to use a taste. So clean spoon. And that has a very nice flavor to it. 
I'm going to add a tiny bit more salt and we're just going to blend one more time. And then what we're going to do is take this out and put it into our bowl. And we just made our very first hummus. So this is very easy. Pinto beans are uh, obviously native. I think it's a very comforting food for many of our elders and for many of our native residents. So this is going to be a flavor that they know uh, and um, actually uh, uh, love. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to make a white bean. But with the white bean, I'm going to add roasted red bell pepper. What we're going to do is we're going to take a fresh red bell pepper. I have here a um, little grill that I'm putting on top. Uh, for those of you that do not have this grill, uh, the easiest thing to do is you can use a rack that uh, you would use to dry uh, cookies or put cookies on. So um, let me show you how we do this. We put this over the open flame and we want to blacken this all the way around. So what you're going to notice is that the flame will start to blacken this roasted red bell pepper and we just want to blacken it all the way around making sure that it gets blackened on uh, the entire surface of the red bell pepper. So while that's going, cooking classes are sort of magic because we have a roasted red bell pepper already done, and I'm going to show you how to peel that. So what I have here is this bell pepper has been completely blackened. We put it into a bowl and we covered it with plastic wrap. As the pepper cools down, the skin begins to loosen and it makes it very easy for us to take that skin off, okay? So I'm just going to peel that skin off and what we're gonna end up with is a roasted red bell pepper which also is going to add nutrients, but it's also going to add some color and some flavor to the next hummus, which is a white kidney bean, uh, also called a cannelloni bean. So cannelloni bean is just the Italian word. So you can see here, I'm going to remove the seeds and the top and if some of the blackened skin doesn't come off, the easiest thing to do is just to take a tiny bit of water and remove that uh, under running water. So now I have a perfectly roasted red bell pepper. That's going to go into my Cuisinart and you can just break it apart with your hands. We're going to take the next can of beans, which is the white kidney beans. And we're going to, again, remove that bean liquid because we just want a little bit of that bean liquid in our hummus, not a lot of the bean liquid. So again, same thing. I'm just going to pour it through my strainer, get that liquid out. This liquid's going to be light or clear, and then I'm going to take the can of beans and add that to my food processor. So for this one, same thing. We're going to add four tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon. We're going to add some of the tahini. And the more you do this, it's going to get easier and easier. So two tablespoons of the sesame tahini. And again, I'm going to use some of the 
roasted or blackened garlic. That's going to soften the flavor. And a tiny bit of black pepper, uh, usually about an eighth. So we want to just be very sparingly uh, because it is spicy and we want to make sure that it's not too much for the seniors. So before I add the bean liquid, I'm going to bring this and blend it. And these beans are much creamier. So we may not need to add any of that liquid. For this hummus, I'm going to take some New Mexico red chili powder. This is mild. So I'm going to add a little bit of that, several reasons. One, for color, but two, I'm going to add this because chilies have uh, antibacterial, antifungal qualities. It's very good for the digestion, lots and lots of vitamin C, and so we want to make sure uh, that we add that. So notice on this one, I did not add any of the bean juice. These beans are larger and they tend to have uh, a creamier texture. So let's take a look. I don't think we need to add any of that bean juice. If you wanted a looser consistency, you can. Just gonna give it one more mix. So depending on the bean, you may not need to add any of that bean juice. This particular hummus has a beautiful color. Again, it's lovely, nice and creamy. And this is uh, going to have lots of nutrients. Remember, beans are an amazing food. They're high in protein, low in fat, uh, and hummus is a great way to get that protein. I know some people have an aversion to eating beans, but if you eat a little bit of this every day, you're going to get lots of protein, lots of nutrients, and a lot of those uh, amino acid uh, proteins that are so important to uh, keeping us. So there we have our second hummus. The second hummus, let's take a look. So we have our pinto bean and we have our white bean with the roasted red bell pepper. So the next one that we're going to make is the black bean. And black beans, I think a lot of people like black beans. Black beans are one of my favorites. Uh, I think Chef Walter is partial to pinto beans because he's uh, from the Navajo Nation, and that's a bean that he grew up with, so that's one of his favorite beans. And so make sure that you choose for your clientele the beans that you think will work the best. So I just want to show you in the background here my chili, my roasted red bell peppers, almost done. So take a look at this. The roasted red bell pepper has been roasted all the way around. It's hot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tiny bit of plastic wrap and put that over, right, so that this cools down. And this is the, the process. We already had one done, but I just want to make sure that you all understand and have the process. And this method is something we can do with uh, our famous green chilies. Uh, we can do this with uh, bell peppers. We could do this with a green pepper, yellow pepper. So once that pepper has been roasted, you just want to uh, put it in a bowl, cover it with plastic, and then uh, let it cool down before you peel it. So let's do our third hummus, black beans. Again, same process. So consistency, and remember, when you're first starting to cook, 
uh, it might seem foreign or it might seem uh, like you can't remember, um, it's okay. Just take your time. Once you do it and you do it and do it and do it again, you're, it's going to get easier and easier. And uh, we've scaled this up to feed lots of people or use uh, one to two cans just to feed uh, smaller amounts of people. And this hummus, not only is it nutritious, but um, it uh, will last several days. So you could make it the day before. So here again, again, we're starting with the process. So beans, strain out the juice. Let's put the beans into the food processor or Cuisinart. Okay. And then we're going to go through the same process, okay? Consistency is uh, sort of the best way to do this. I'm going to use the roasted garlic again. So I'm adding some of that blackened garlic. And notice I'm just putting in the whole cloves because we're going to be blending this. The lemon juice, we're going to measure out again. Four tablespoons. There we go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of that tahini. This also adds nutrients and makes it very creamy. Uh, I think the seniors will really like this. And then tiny bit, about an eighth of a teaspoon, or what we would call a small pinch of the black pepper. Notice I'm not adding salt. I'm going to taste this. I want to make sure that uh, the flavor's good. If we need to add salt, we can do so at the end. So we're going to blend this. Now, Sometimes some of the beans get stuck around the outside. So take your spatula and make sure that you uh, rub it all the way around. Okay. All righty. So now, again, we have a very beautiful creamy. Before I move it, I'm going to take a clean tasting spoon, and I'm going to taste to make sure that that flavor is good. It's got a very nice creamy texture. I am going to add just a tiny bit of salt. And... On this one, I'm going to add just a tiny bit more garlic because I really don't taste that garlic. So uh, let's go ahead and re-blend that. All righty. So now we have another hummus. This is our third hummus today. We have our black bean hummus. Again, look at that beautiful texture. And I use hummus um, all the time now because it's so easy to make and so healthy. So instead of butter, which is a saturated fat, I like to take a little bit of hummus in the morning and put it on toast. Uh, I use it instead of mayonnaise on sandwiches. Uh, and we could also rub it on uh, maybe a tortilla that we're making a burrito with uh, to add nutrients and to add flavors. So here again, now we have our three hummuses. We have the black bean, we have the white bean, and we have the roasted red bell pepper with the white bean and the pinto beans. So uh, pretty amazing. So take a look at all of those. But the next thing that I want to show you how to make is what's called no fry fry bread. And no fry fry bread is actually uh, very easy to make. And
It has uh, ingredients that uh, you are going to be familiar with, that you're going to know how to use and how to do. And so I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to use the same grill that we used for the uh, other recipe. And just because I'm changing recipes, I'm going to go ahead and change my gloves out and put a fresh pair of gloves on. So for this recipe, what we're going to do is we're going to take four cups of flour, any kind of flour that you have in your kitchen. So you can use uh, all purpose, you could use unbleached. Whole wheat is gonna be the, the healthiest, but whenever you use a whole grain, it will be a little heavier. So just know that you might have to experiment, but uh, we know that uh, many of our seniors are used to that delicious uh, fried bread with some of the famous flours. So uh, what you want to do is do what they will eat and then work on maybe adding a whole wheat flour uh, as you progress into this. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of baking powder. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And I'm going to take my uh, spoon, it's dry, and I'm going to just mix those ingredients all together. And that way the baking powder and the salt is in the flour. So I want to use some warm water, so I'm just going to let my water get warm here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour that water in slowly uh, and we're going to mix the dough. Uh, this dough, because of the baking powder, likes to sit. So you want to make this uh, at least an hour in advance. Uh, we magically have a dough done. We love cooking classes because we went ahead and made that for you. Uh, but I want to show you how to do it. So you want to get your hand in there. I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, have made some sort of fry bread dough. This is the same dough. All we're doing is instead of frying it, we are going to grill it, okay? Some of you may know this as tortilla bread. Uh, some of you may know this. Um, I know in some of the Apache communities, they call it racket bread. Uh, we call it no fry fry bread. And why are we choosing not to fry it? Because that, that lard, that oil for frying, uh, not only adds uh, extra fat, uh, but it, it's not healthy. We can save the fry bread and do that for a special occasion, maybe once a year, but we really want to try to make uh, bread that is healthier that we can eat every day. And any kind of flat bread, so flat bread is very important because flat bread, when your body eats that bread, so a tortilla, the no fry fry bread, what it does is it metabolizes very slowly when you eat it. So it's what we call low glycemic. And low glycemic means that it is going to uh, release very slowly and not turn into sugar uh, very quickly. So here is our dough. I'm gonna take it out of the bowl, put down a tiny bit of flour, and then you wanna knead it. So kneading, you're pushing down and moving that dough. Okay, so here's a little bit of flour and pushing down. This is, think of a cat that kneads, right? Uh, you want to make sure that you are kneading it and it is going to turn into a beautiful dough. If it sticks, take a tiny bit more flour and just put that on. So I like to push and churn, okay? and uh, I actually love those. Um, this is one of my most um, wonderful things to make. It's, uh, I find it very relaxing. And so you can make your dough in advance. We've made it up to several hours, okay? And what we're gonna do, you're gonna need approximately uh, about three minutes, maybe up to five. Uh, you want to make sure that that um, baking powder 
has been immersed into the dough and that the dough is able to rest, okay? So after you've kneaded it, remember, push down and turn, push down and turn, and enjoy the process. You know, in a lot of our tribal communities, um, there's a saying about bread um, that you want to have good thoughts, that you want to have positive thoughts and healing thoughts and, and goodness uh, in that. So once you've kneaded it, look at that, it's very beautiful. You can put it back in the bowl and then it's just going to get uh, covered. I'm going to use a little plastic wrap that you could cover with a, a moist towel and once you have it, it's had a chance to rise, we want this dough to rise for uh, 30 minutes at the least, um, but uh, up to an hour or more. So there is our bread. That's a beautiful dough, okay? And we just want to let that rest. So here we have dough that has been resting, and I'm going to show you how to roll that out. We're going to use a rolling pin. Some of you may just want to use your hands. And I'm going to turn my burner on because I'm going to grill this. So this dough has been resting uh, and it is nice and ready to go. Again, I'm going to put on my fresh gloves. And now we're going to roll this out. So some of you may want a rolling pin, some of you may not. I'm going to take a piece about the size, somewhere between a ping pong ball and a tennis ball. We're going to put a little bit of flour down on your cutting board or your work surface. Going to put the dough, you want to make sure it has a little bit of flour on both sides so it doesn't stick. And then you're just going to roll. And whenever you're rolling, what I like to do is I go one direction. You might want to rub, here we go, a little bit of flour here. Okay, and then turn it, and we're going to try and make a circle, although uh, it's handmade, so it's okay if it's not perfect. It's okay uh, if it's not a um, perfect circle. Some of you may want to do it with your hands, and that's okay too. Now I'm going to take my bread, and I'm going to come over here. If you did not have a grill, you could also use a cast iron pan and you could cook it flat in that cast iron pan. So we're gonna let that bread cook until it starts to bubble, just like it would with fry bread. And once that bread uh, bubbles a little, I'm gonna turn it over. And then we will have, see that bread, see the bubbles? Beautiful, look at that, it's starting to bubble very nicely. So you're going to see it bubble all the way around, and then that's going to get turned over. What I like to do is I like to put the, um, the warm dough in a clean kitchen towel, uh, and you could put it in a basket or you could put it in a bowl. So here, see, it's going to have those beautiful grill marks. And... If you put it in a, a metal bowl, it will keep warm. I still like to put a towel on the bottom. And then I'm also going to put a clean towel on top. So let's do this one more time. Okay. All right. So we're going to take our dough, make a ball somewhere between the size of a ping pong or tennis ball. Take a tiny bit of flour, put flour on both sides so that it does not stick. Okay, and then you're going to take your rolling pin and roll, turn, roll again, turn, roll again. 
and it is ready to go on the grill. So that is actually really nice, quite round. Uh, and you can either serve the whole bread or what we're going to do today, what I'm going to show you today, is we can actually cut that bread into little pieces to eat with our hummus. So let's take a look at this cooked bread. It cooked very nicely on both sides, okay? There it is, it's nice and puffy. Uh, and we have a beautiful fry bread, no fry, fry bread. And then to keep it warm, you're just going to take a towel that will hold in not only the heat, it's in a metal bowl, but making it so that uh, it will um, be good for your uh, plants. And this will last, uh, for, you could keep it uh, heating, oh gosh, for a couple of hours. So you could make this, but this is one of the last things you wanna make uh, before your meal. Again, take that ball, roll it, take a tiny bit of flour, get flour on both sides, and uh, then we're going to take it once it's rolled out. Here's our next bread. Okay, that's done. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the basket and we'll do one more just so everybody has it. So this is something that you probably already know how to make, um, but I'm just showing you a different way uh, how to do this. And uh, again, remember that bread is not only delicious, but all flat breads are going to metabolize very slowly. Uh, and so it's a perfect food uh, to eat. And um, this is something that uh, all of our native clients love. Uh, and so remember that uh, this is going to go very well. So let's take a look now while we're waiting on that fry bread on some vegetables. And let's do a little lesson uh, in vegetables. So again, I'm gonna go to a new recipe. I'm going to change, get some fresh gloves, and uh, show you some uh, vegetables and show you how to cut those vegetables. So let's start here with this tray. And what we're going to do is take a look at some healthy, nutritious, fresh vegetables that would go really nicely uh, with that hummus, um, in addition to the fry bread or the no fry fry bread. Um, this, these vegetables uh, are going to uh, be really nice. I'm going to show you a beautiful cutting board for display, but you can put it any way you want and um, uh, on your uh, food service plates. Uh, Etc. So we have some sprouts. Sprouts are very, very, very nutritious. Uh, they're called a living food, and they're called a living food because when the plant starts to grow, all the nutrients go into the sprout. So these are bought from our farmer's market here in Santa Fe. I have sunflower or radish, so these could be used uh, as part of that, but let's take a look at what else we can do. So I have some celery. Celery is something that everybody has. So we're just gonna cut some bite-sized pieces. And uh, I actually think that that's too big. So what I'm gonna do is just cut it into smaller pieces. Again, think about who your clientele is and what will they eat and how will they eat it. So here we have some fresh celery. Celery, again, that raw vegetable. All plants, and this is why we always say, eat the rainbow, eat the rainbow. Why do we say eat the rainbow? Because the more color in the food, the healthier it is, and it has fiber. So we wanna keep those raw vegetables. These are carrots. So these are actually pre-packaged. They come washed, ready to eat. Uh, some of you, uh, if you have um, seniors that cannot eat carrots, you wouldn't do this. But again, I'm going to just take those carrots and cut them in half. 
This is a white carrot, very beautiful. A red carrot, again, those beta carotenes, very important. Oh, this is so pretty and so delicious. And so many of you may be able to order this uh, in bulk. Um, and then just a regular carrot. And this is a good size for uh, eating. Okay, so uh, think about what you have available. Um, I'm also going to show you uh, a cucumber. So cucumbers are inexpensive. Again, very nutritious. They have lots of water. I think they have lots of flavor. Some people think they're a little too watery. But how are we going to take this cucumber and make it into edible pieces? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut at what we call a bias. So cutting at a bias means at an angle, okay? And I'm going to cut a about eighth of an inch. And look at that piece. That's perfect for dipping. So what we're doing is we're letting our seniors have uh, a fresh vegetable, which is very good, something that they like, something that they can eat. And uh, we're cutting at a bias, and we're cutting about an eighth of an inch, okay? Everybody can see that. So here we have some delicious cucumber, which would go very, very nicely uh, with the hummus. So that's another option. The other thing that I want to show you is an apple. So an apple, all of you probably have this in your kitchen. I'm going to show you how to cut this, and this would also be delicious. It would add a little bit of sweet to the beans. So I'm going to cut in what I call the four directions. So we're cutting one, two, three, four. Okay. I actually missed that. All right. So we want the core to go to the side. And then again, about eighth to a quarter inch and cut some pieces of apple, which is nutritious, delicious, and it'll add a little bit of sweetness to the, so let's show you again. You've got your piece from that four directions. Cut, 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 okay? And those are going to go on our tray of uh, different kinds of, so you could use, this is actually a Fuji apple, and a Fuji apple is very crisp and very sweet. It's actually really, really one of my favorite apples, but you could use a Honey Crisp, you could use a Granny Smith. Remember that the Granny Smith apple is going to be a little more tart, so you have to make sure that your uh, clients will eat that. Beautiful. Okay, so we have some ideas here, but we're not done. I still want to show you one last tray, and the last tray is radishes. Radishes are a little bit spicy. Um, they have lots of nutrients. So this is just a regular radish, which all of you are probably familiar with. And what I'm going to do with that is just cut it lengthwise, okay? And this will also be a great, look at that, beautiful, okay? But I want to show you some radishes that you may not be familiar with. This is from our farmer's market. This is called a purple daikon. It's a beautiful radish and it has lots of nutrients. So I've washed it and pulled off any root hairs, okay? So what we like to do is, again, we're thinking bite-sized. Two things you could do. You could do a circle, right? That's, look at that, beautiful. Or you could do sticks. So sticks, what you would do is just make little sticks. So again, up to you, however you think you can get your uh, clientele to eat this, but look at that beautiful piece of radish, again, adding uh, lots of nutrients. Or another option is to do a half circle, okay? So you don't have to do a full circle. You don't have to do a stick. You can also do a half circle. 
and that half circle uh, is a, a nice bite size amount. We've washed that vegetable, beautiful. We're gonna put that here on our tray. And then I'm just going to show you one last vegetable. Uh, many of you may or may not be, look at how beautiful that is. Uh, we have uh, lots of good choices here, vegetables. So this could be part of a salad. This could be on the plate as the side. One more, this is called a watermelon radish. So the watermelon radish is going to look like a watermelon on the inside. Again, we took the, look at that. We took our, so I'll show you that half circle. Beautiful, okay. So again, nice, even cutting on this. It's got lots of nutrients. Look how pretty that is. It's going to be a little bit spicy, but it's going to have a lot of flavor and something. So this is something some of you may have gardens, and if you don't have a garden, maybe this is something that you think about in the future, doing a garden and growing some of these so that uh, we keep our seniors with lots of uh, options and lots of food that is very nutritious. So let's take a look at what we can do here. <laughs> so if you were doing family style, you could take small little uh, cups. Let's do our roasted red bell pepper first. This is, remember, the white bean roasted red bell pepper. Okay, you take a little bit of that. So it can be served uh, in a little dish or a ramekin on the side, uh, or you can put it uh, a little scoop on a salad. It would be very delicious with a salad. Uh, here is our pinto bean. This is a favorite. This is going to be a big favorite in a lot of our native communities. And the last one. Also the black bean, and I, I like the black bean a lot. So uh, again, you can choose one or you can do all three. Here's that black bean. Look at that beautiful consistency, guys. And now, last but not least, we're going to take our no fry fry bread. And this is the other option. So I'm a big advocate of vegetables, but I think, uh, Many of our uh, seniors are going to love the uh, bread. And so here we have, um, uh, you could take the bread. Now look at that. You could cut it and put some of that hummus in there. Or you could make smaller triangles. You could do like this, and that can get dipped in. So here's another option for cutting. This would be lovely. This is its own, almost its own course. Uh, or uh, what you could do is take that uh, bread and um, spoon some of this on top of it. But here is our perfectly done no fry fry bread. And uh, you have the option of the triangles or you have the option uh, of the bread. So one other idea, because I want to make sure um, that we leave you guys today um, with some thoughts. So you're going to make your dough for your fry bread in advance and you're going to let it rise. But this is a beautiful sandwich. You could make a taco and you could put a little of the hummus down on the bread and then you could put in uh, a healthy meat, you could put vegetables, uh, anything you would like and serve it as a taco or a tostada. So let's review uh, so that all of you can leave uh, making sure that you know what to, to do. We have lots of vegetable options and uh, apples, delicious. We have the watermelon radish, a regular radish. We have the purple daikon radish, carrots, cucumbers, and uh, celery. So these are all uh, options for that hummus. You also have the bread. The bread could be spooned on. Uh, this could be served in a small ramekin on the plate as its own side dish. And so for these dishes, you want to 
make sure, um, in the cooking world, we say mise en place. So before you start, you want to make sure that you have all the ingredients in your pantry and that you'll be able to make this. So the pantry list would be fresh lemon. It would be the can of beans. You could also use fresh beans. You could cook those beans very slowly overnight and make sure that you had fresh beans. If you're using uh, beans cooked in a slow cooker or a hot pot, you wanna make sure to not add salt. Add salt when you make whatever it is that you're going to make with those beans. Uh, but canned beans, perfectly fine. Limit the amount of salt that you add when you use the canned beans. The tahini, and the tahini is just a sesame paste or a sesame blend. Uh, some people have actually used other nut butters. Uh, I've seen people use almond butter or cashew butter. Tahini is the more traditional, so a basic hummus, but then you could add other ingredients to this. Don't be afraid to experiment and have fun, right? What could we add? We could add some roasted green chilies to the white bean or to the black bean. We could add more red chili powder or soaked red chili pods, right? So you could add any purees that you wanted to add into that. A little bit of potato or sweet potato. So other things could be added. We're gonna provide you with the basic bean hummus recipe, and then I'm gonna encourage all of you to experiment and play around. See what works, see what your seniors like. So the basic hummus is always the same. What varies is the other ingredients that you put in. The no fry fry bread, uh, I, if you can get organic, I'm gonna uh, recommend that you try and get organic, unbleached, uh, all-purpose flour, baking powder, and a little kosher salt or sea salt. So we want to limit our salt intake, but we want to remember that salt does have minerals and nutrients and that our ancestors have always used salt uh, and traded for salt uh, all throughout New Mexico. And here in New Mexico, we do have uh, salt lakes. And so many tribes, many pueblos uh, also used that. So we have some very nutritious foods. Uh, we have vegetables, which we want to incorporate. This would be delicious, a big scoop next to a salad, or maybe this is the salad with some of these vegetables. And then, of course, a favorite's going to be the bread. Uh, we are going to do more cooking classes, more recipes uh, in the future, and we want you to join us. We want you to learn and become confident and self-sufficient in the kitchen. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors for having us do this, and I want to thank Walter Whitewater, who's done a great job on the camera work today. Uh, join us next time. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of good recipes, soups and stews and other dishes. Uh, I look forward to having you join us in the future, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Chef Frank and Chef Whitewater. The recipes and more may be found at the links below. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you for joining us.